Well, I, I uh, was always destined not to be a doctor or an accountant or anything other than a chemical uh, manufacturer with my dad because chemical chemicals run through his blood. He, he could make a product and like making a bowl of soup. He'd go to the big batch, big tank, thousand gallon tank, and he'd put his finger in the pot and he'd go, yes, it needs more spirit. I haven't got enough spirit into this. Just like making a, a, a pot of soup. That was his imagination. That's his ability that he had. He could blend materials easy. He was just one of those guys, and I've, I've used this quote many times, he was the best captain and coach using football parlance as a boy to me than I've ever had in my life because I just loved everything that came out of his mouth. Needless to say, any thought of me being a policeman or a, 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 an accountant or a doctor was never edited. I was destined to go down one road and that was into the chemical world of hunters. Well, I went to school and I uh, was in the boxing there and, and I went in the Railways Institute boxing because Dad was a featherweight boxer and Dad said to me one time, and I was a, as an amateur at school, he said, Lee, and he's trainer Hot Keys was training me, I was featherweight division. He said, Len, Hot Keys, you're pretty good. I said, oh, well, I've won most of my fights. He said, yeah, you have. He said, how would you like to turn professional? I said, what's that? He said, well, you're amateur at the moment. I said, well, what's professional? Well, you'll get a guinea a round for a start off. You'll be fighting three rounders, and you'll get a guinea a round, and you could go on and, who knows? I said, Dad, I could win a world title. Don't make any mistake about that. You know how hard I hit. He said, well, that's what Hockey said. You are, have got every chance of being something. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, but Mum doesn't want me to. No, but don't tell Mum. or Just go quietly and see what you think. So I thought about it and he said, uh, what do you want to do? I said, well, you told me I'd get three guineas for the fight. I'm getting nothing now and I'm fighting them. I said, what difference? I might as well have a fight. He said, well, do you want to? I said, yeah. He said, well, we tell Mum. I said, no, well, it's up to you. Anyway, he said, well, I've arranged a fight for you at the Fitzroy Stadium. I said, yeah. I said, who am I fighting? He said, oh, this chap from Ballarat. He said, he's six years older than you, seven years older, and he's a professional. He's had professional fights. You haven't had one. He said, Dad, wouldn't make a difference. I'll stop him in the first round. You know how hard I hit. Yes, he said, well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Do you think you could lose the first round? I said, what do you mean lose the first round? He said, well, we can get two to one in the red corner. That'll be you. And we'll put the red on you if you think you're that good. I said, oh, well, I said, I've been easy, but don't worry about it. Two to one. He said, yeah, we'll have the red on you. I said, oh, well, yeah, do that. Well, that was the last fight I ever had. I've never, the difference between professional and amateur. He came out of his corner 100 mile an hour and split that eye open in a flash, first punch, and he bruised that eye, it was half shut. And I'll never forget going back to the corner at West Melbourne Stadium and Dad put his head through the ring and he said, good boy, he said, we've got the two to one. I said, you got the two to one? I said, I don't know what round it is. What round is it? He said, you're joking. I said, no, I'm not. Anyway, fight ended and I think this eye was closed and, <laughs> and I went home and my mother saw me and said, what you done to my boy? I said, yeah, well, it was uh, much my fault, Mum. I said to Dad I wanted to. So my very short stint in the boxing ring to follow where my dad was lasted one bout in the professional. In the amateurs, I was pretty good, but professional is different. They're more, they're more tougher fighters, and you know, as against the amateur versus the professionals, are different. But I, uh, I always in, in, enjoyed that, and because uh, uh, I just liked the competition in football. I liked the competition at school, Essendon Grammar. I loved it, and uh, uh, 
was beautiful. I did always a funny thing, you know, at school, you'd want to do well, and I'd always say to my, once again, friendship, I built up a lovely friendship with Ellen O'Neill, who was ducks of the school. Brilliant student to be a friend of. If you had exams, you'd always make sure you shared the information that I always sat with him, next to him. So you come into a class and, will you sit in Ellen? I'll sit in Ellen. Do you mind if I sit next to you? We'll exchange notes and try to help each other. And my old mate Bill Holmes, he said, can I sit with you and Ellen? I said, yeah, well sit with us. The exam's on today. We've got to get past, or we've got to get it right. So we sit together, three of us. So the exam, the results come out two days later and, and uh, Mr. Lewin said, boys, there's been remarkable performance by Len Hunter and Bill Holmes in, in the Latin examination. I've got to congratulate both boys because their, their results over the last few months haven't been good, but they are equal top with Alan O'Neill. He's the ducks in the school, I might have. They both got 84 points out of 100. Now, having said that, after school, I would like to see Alan, uh, uh, Blen Hunter, <laughs> and Bill, uh, uh, Bill King, come and see me. So up we go, and he said, now, what do you put your, your improvement down to? I said, well, I have studied hard, sir. I said, my dad's told me I've got to improve a bit at school, and I put my head down, so to speak, and I'm really having a go. Bill Holmes, what do you put yours down to? Oh, well, like then, we, we both realised that we weren't doing well, and we knuckled down. Right, the only thing that worries me, he said, you've got 82, You've got 82, Bill, and Alan O'Neill, the ducks of the school, he's got 82. Now, you said, well, made the same mistake. I said, well, sir, I said, uh, we do, do talk to each other and try to help each other where we can, and uh, we may have exchanged a few notes over there. And I'll never get my mate Bill Holmes in. He's worse than me. He said, Len, you tell the truth, you were cheating off me, you pulled my arm down, you know where you're right? Pull my arm down. I said, well, well I want to cheat, you're worse than me. Anyway, he just got me paper, got Bill Holmes's paper, now he says, at half past four, go back into your classroom, I'm going to give you the same five questions and do it. Oh, I say get in the classroom and the first thing Bill Holmes says, are we going to sit together? I said, you get right up that, that end and I'm doing mine there. I bet I get better points than you. <laughs> anyway, I got about 38 and he got about 34. So we didn't do too well on that, but that was where you, <laughs> you took the friendship just a bit too far, you know, and I didn't condone that type of thing, but you help one another. and. Uh, that's that's sort of what uh, what we did. So no, nah. and you, uh, anyway, when I left school, I knew I was only destined to go one way. So it wasn't going to uh, kill the goose that laid the egg. So I just played along quietly. He did come home to my place, the principal, to meet Dad and Mum, and tell them about how I progressed. And he was very good. I thought he was going to cut me apart. He, yeah. Come on, because Mum said, well, ask him to come home and have dinner with us. I said, what? He's a prince. I said, well, I'd like to, Dad wants to talk to us. I said, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so he came and uh, he spoke volumes about me. He said, Len doesn't concentrate enough. That's his problem. And uh, he's very talkative. Yes, and, uh, but, but he has improved from the last quarter. So, I went, when he went away, I felt happy and my dad was happy because you know, he just wanted me to, to do well. So, yeah, that, that was my story. Yeah. All right, you've still got five sons that are involved with the chemical industry yes. and more grandchildren getting involved mm. by the day. Yeah. What is it that makes you proud of what they're still doing? In I suppose the biggest thing was, like I said earlier, I wasn't forced into chemicals, I just wanted to be in chemicals that they wanted to be in business and wanted to be in chemicals. 
I suppose the only one that didn't was Wayne Early, when I told you he decided he wanted to be a policeman. Well, I thought that's not bad having a policeman in the family, you can always fall back on things that might happen that won't happen. I said, that's all right, Wayne, if you don't want to be in the business, that's up to you. He said, you don't mind? I said, yes, I do mind, but I'm not going to stop you. So he went in and he sat in the waiting room for about two hours, waiting for his turn to be interviewed. There about ten in front of him, so he said, I sat and sat and sat and I thought, well, really, do I want to be a policeman? And he just got up and went to the girl on the desk and said, I've decided to pull my application out and came back and joined the business. And uh, we then, of course, decided that, as we told hunters, that we'd call it the Big H chemical company. Hence the birth of the Big H, and uh, away we go. At that time we had the, uh, the boys plus, um, plus Greg Holmes, who you probably would have known as a director of that company. And they had to start from scratch to build that business. And uh, the latter years you've seen the operation, the way they go, they've done a remarkable job and uh, I'm quite certain the boss up top there would be looking down on those boys and say they're doing what I expect them to do, so uh, yeah.